This is WCNY's The Capitol Press Room, and we're highlighting the reintegration of veterans into society, including accessing the state's public colleges and universities. For our discussion, we're joined by Assemblymember Marianne Buttonshawn, a Mohawk Valley Democrat. Welcome to the show, Assemblymember. Thank you for having me. And we're also joined by Vince Scalise, CEO of the Veterans Outreach Center, who served in the New York Army National Guard for over 20 years. Welcome to the show, Vince. Thanks for having me. So for starters, broadly speaking, why is it important that the state provide benefits of any kind to veterans? Why is this something that's in, I guess, society's best interest? Well, I I have to say, obviously, their dedication and commitment to the country, if we can provide anything, our veterans should be on the top of the list. So New York currently has a tuition assistance program that is open to combat veterans and is worth the cost of tuition at any SUNY institution. What do you think has been the impact of that program for veterans and then for New York State? So it's very important to to give these benefits to veterans because veterans lose a lot of time of normalcy when you want to think about when they leave the CERB. So it takes them a little bit longer to catch back up into the reality of the situation. But providing benefits like this is mostly important too. You have to understand we had an entirely volunteer military for the past 50 years. You have to reward those people that that took up the the call to serve without being forced to do it. And it's when people volunteer for service and they, they get out and they see the benefits that are being offered to them, it makes them reintegrate into society a lot easier. They feel appreciated for their service. It adds to some normalcy for them to get their lives back into a civilian uh, network. So it's very important to have benefits for those that served. Well, Vince, you bring up the idea, though, that we have a volunteer military as opposed to, say, uh, Americans being uh, drafted like we saw in World War II or Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So couldn't we say, though, that people who join the military do so with their eyes open now and are aware of, say, the benefits that are available, and as opposed to those who were drafted, and you could make a better case that maybe we should provide some post-benefits uh, to them since they had no say in their career path? Right. But, like you said, they have eyes wide open that they're going to get these benefits. That's why they join. Right, so but maybe, you're talking maybe, about maybe adding a benefit more. after the fact, though. This is something that would be uh, mm-hmm. retroactive to people who already served in the military, um, the program we're about to get into. So shouldn't people just get the benefits that they already you know, signed up for? But again, I think that uh, as, as you opened in, in this discussion, you talk about those that served in combat receive that educational benefit. Mm-hmm. As we talk about the last 50 years, when someone signs up, they're not sure what is going to happen in the turn of events of this world, is this country, is it going to be combat or non-combat? So the purpose of this legislation is to level the playing field. Right now, we provide it for combat. As Vincent stated, that's something that someone is well aware of, similar to any other benefits as one goes into a career whether it's any benefits that are provided, and and education is one. Um, We have many private uh, companies that provide educational opportunities. We also passed a piece of legislation this session that uh, expands it to their children. So not only those veterans, but their children would be provided. So there's, there's funding that has been placed within the SUNY budget where this money would be allocated for these individuals that so choose to be a part, uh, expanding their educational opportunities. Well, yeah, let's talk about the legislation that moved uh, unanimously, uh, I believe, earlier this year that would expand the eligibility of the existing credit to not just combat veterans. So for the purpose of your legislation, Assemblymember, who would qualify as a, a veteran for this program? As it is deemed and written today. So um, we have had those conversations about how to expand the word veteran, uh, but clearly as it is written is what it would expand to. Not only those that served uh, during combat, but would serve uh, during non-combat times. And is there a distinction between, say, different branches? If I'm in the Coast Guard versus the Navy, uh, the reserves versus some sort of active uh, discipline? None. Whatever branch one chooses, or as uh, Vinny stated, as there might have been guidance, uh, clearly that doesn't matter. 
a veteran defined as someone that has served this great nation uh, receives this benefit. And what's your expectation then of the additional cost given the expanded eligibility, assuming more New Yorkers will want to take advantage of this if it's signed into law? Well, and then it, it, it's called the VTAP. So as you know, we have the TAP money that is allocated, and this is Veterans TAP that has been allocated. And as it was reviewed within the budget, this funding is not being u- utilized as we thought it would. So this was the opportunity to expand to those that would have the opportunity to obviously uh, utilize it. So you're saying that the existing appropriation would cover uh, any additional veterans who might become eligible and want to take advantage of this? That is the ultimate goal, uh, because we have seen that the money is not being utilized. So more importantly, how do we make sure that veterans provide themselves with an educational opportunity if they choose to, and this money is there and has been allocated and approved within the budget? And there are other programs that are designed to help low-income New Yorkers or even middle-income New Yorkers access higher education. I think of, as you mentioned, the TAP program or, say, the Excelsior Scholarship. Would those avenues have to be exhausted before utilizing a tuition assistance program specifically targeting veterans? Or could this be utilized as the first line of funding uh, for someone trying to access higher education? Every application, they, when you apply to any university or school, you have to go through the standard TAP, PAL, financial assistance. So that, that's always going to be the first line of assistance. The other, like the veteran uh, benefits, are usually the secondary. So even before I, my son has um, GI benefits because of my ser- you know, my service over the years that I didn't use, I was able to transfer it to him. But before we could even tap into that, he still had to apply for his pal, his tap, and use all the other financial uh, assistance programs that were out there. So Vince, we often hear that it's difficult to get veterans engaged with the benefits that they are eligible mm-hmm. for. And so if this legislation does become law, how do you ensure that we are connecting veterans with this opportunity? Because they have to actually you know, declare that, hey, I, I'm a veteran mm-hmm. and this is something I'm uh, either interested in pursuing or would be interested in learning about my different benefits. So, so how do we bridge that gap that exists? By agencies like like mine, the you know the CNY Veterans Outreach Center, you know we spend the majority of the time with the veteran, making sure they're receiving the benefits they're entitled to, because that's one of the biggest problems. You're absolutely correct. A lot of VA benefits go unclaimed, and we see it every day with every almost every client that comes in through our doors that you know are in need to include the homeless and never registered for a VA benefit. You know, never registered for VA health care. So we, we spend, our case managers and our staff spend a lot of time connecting veterans with the benefits that they're entitled to. And the state of New York does a great job with, they have, you know, um, New York State veteran representatives. Uh, all the counties have, the you know, veteran uh, county reps. And that's their main focus is to make sure the veteran is connected to the, the benefits they're entitled to. Assemblymember, I have to imagine there are people who are listening and trying to figure out uh, how they're going to pay for college right now or how uh, maybe college is cost prohibitive for them. And maybe they're thinking about the life choices they made. What would be your pitch to them why they shouldn't necessarily be upset or envious of a new program targeting veterans specifically? Well, I think it's to the question you just asked and that Vinny answered. There are many opportunities for different individuals to apply for financial aid. And there's different financial aid avenues that are there. Uh, Clearly, uh, these are individuals that have served our country. Whether it was combat or non-combat, they were there for us. And as we talk about different benefits that the Senate and the Assembly are asked to bring forward, to me, this is one of the easiest is uh, you talked about the voting record on this bill, and it, it was one that everyone clearly supported and felt was very important. So when we move forward to say to someone else, if you're talking uh, the aspect of tit for tat, 
Um, this to me is again our veterans that serve this nation and clearly if this is a simple benefit that we can provide then this is one that I support 100% the difficulty is going to be as Vinny stated um, how do we make sure they're aware of it and his organization is they introduce as a nonprofit different veterans to what is there so we're going to have to make sure that number one, veterans are aware of it. And, and number two, if others feel that they have been slighted, then this could be an avenue for them if they wanted to join the armed forces. Vince, do you think the fact that the state is contemplating something like this and that there's a recognition that uh, veterans need help paying for college uh, indicates that the federal government is dropping the ball in some way because veterans are uh, serving the federal government primarily? So are we thinking about this in terms of a lackluster federal benefits program? Should this be something that the federal government should be taking on? No, no. uh, Every state has a Department of Veterans Affairs, okay? And the states have a responsibility to provide benefits as well. And you you say, you know, it's it's a federal mission most of the time. It's really not. Mm -hmm. Think about the non-combat missions we've just had in the past few years. You know know how many soldiers were on active duty during COVID-19? You know, almost the entire New York Army National Guard was called to service to do everything from more detail in New York City to handing out hand sanitizer in Buffalo. You know, um, January 6th, I spent three months on the Capitol steps, you know, after January 6th. So we do a lot for not only federal mission, but state mission as well as veterans. So and it is a nice sense of appreciation to see that the state you live in, the state you pay your taxes to, the state you know you just chose to raise a family in, appreciates the service that you provided. I'm not sure if you're aware, Rome was just hit with a horrific tornado, and the National Guard was there uh, providing cleanup. And the expertise of each one of those individuals was so impressive, because we're talking large machinery that was needed and utilized, and it was just like a automatic... Let me make sure that um, I'm here for you. And whether it's a bobcat or a dump truck, uh, they were driving it with expertise. Well, we've been speaking with Assemblymember Marianne Buttonshawn. She's a Mohawk Valley Democrat. Assemblymember, thank you so much for making the time. Absolutely. Thank you for having us this morning. And we've also been speaking with Vince Scalise, CEO of the Veterans Outreach Center in the Mohawk Valley. Vince, thank you so much for making the time as well. I really appreciate it. I was glad to be here. Thank you. And for more Capital Press Room content, visit capitalpressroom.org or wherever you download your favorite podcasts. And if you listen to us from an Apple device, make sure to leave us a rating and a review so it helps other people find the show. Support for the Capitol Press Room provided by the New York State AFL-CIO, a federation of 3,000 unions fighting for working people by keeping New York State union strong. Visit unionstrongny.org for more information. Join us again for Capitol Press Room, a production of WCNY Connected, Syracuse.